this. Okay, you can go. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, wait, someone has to record. I am. Uh, yeah, oh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Right. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, go. go. Damn, hurry your ass up. There was two bangs on the door before Lord's neighbor quieted down. He wondered for half a second how long the sweet silence would last. Probably not long. If he didn't come out with, with the next minute. This didn't make him speed up his attempts of buttoning up his dress shirt, though. This was the last year that this oppressive government could put him through the stress of having his name possibly called to be a part of a televised death match. He sure as hell was going to take his time before he went to that gathering of stress and sadness. Daniel, I will call the goddamn guards to take your ass to the reaping, so hurry the fuck up. After the words left the neighbor's mouth, Lord opened the door to see the other arms stop inches away from his face. Not being the type of man to apologize, Rainbow lowered his arm and gave the other a nod. It's your sweet ass time, and you still look like a complete shit. I'm sorry, I just got a text. <laughs> Good uh, job. I don't think that was part of it. <laughs> oh, it's not. I just have to look better than you, and that doesn't take much. I learned him a little more aggressive than playful swat towards his head, which he easily avoided. With that little spat, they walked to the ceremony. And when they reached the sign, area, the fight was as tragic as normal. Children oh, just aged for games were trying. We're dropping them off to the awful job of hiding. And I did have for three hours. Things he really didn't care about happened. He'd lower him off, turn around, really ask to be arrested. He skipped. But the second he stopped, Ray was there to push him. He glanced back at the man, who was now giving him a scornful look. The same look he was given every year. This is your last year. Take it like a fucking man. Rainbow shoved him towards the ground, towards the group of boys, checking in, and didn't move to take his place in the adult seating until Lord was second in line, unable to run. After checking in, Lord stood by some people who he considered to be his friends. He didn't really take much effort to talk to them, or interact most days, just enough to be a part of their social group. They made senseless chatter with each other as they waited. None of them really cared about what was going to take place soon, since their odds of being picked were very low, and they could go back to chatting up girls in three hours. Oh, yeah. Whenever it started, everyone was shushed and forced to stand in a somewhat organized fashion. The mayor, the documentary, and the lady from the capital seemed to find a way to make two and a half hours painfully boring. Though, whenever the projector for the documentary of the war broke, she kicked and broke her heel. After a few curses that she wrongly assumed the crowd didn't hear, she smiled and cheerfully said, Just some lovely fears. Don't worry. And now came the excitement from the choosing. The capital lady said a few words that Lord didn't care to catch in a high-pitched, May the odds be ever in your favor before she plunged her hand into a bowl filled with name slips. With an overdramatically withdrawal of her hand, she stood in front of the mic and unfolded the slip of paper. And this year's girl tribute is, it seemed like the capital lady didn't know how to read as she intensely looked over the slip again, Daniela Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Lord didn't know what to him off more. The fact that it was his last year and he was chosen. The fact that they got his name wrong on an official document. Or the fact that his name was in the fucking girls' bowl. He decided to be angry about all three. What Was it sad that M1 wasn't surprised when her name was pulled from the bowl? She guessed that it was... Since her district's reapings were always rigged, that it caused lack of an emotional roller coaster. And after breaking the mayor's son's nose after he broke her drum kit, allowed her to see. Them. Even after hearing her name severely, uh, severely butchered, severely? That's I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be severely, severely butchered beyond recognition by the capital representative, Toro Machete. She had no ounce of regret. Though she heard her parents and older brother sobbing as she was escorted towards the stage by peacekeepers. She didn't consider her action a mistake when the sounds of a fight broke out behind her and she dared to look back. The sight of her best friend nailing the mayor's son in the face several times before dra being dragged off screaming, Go get them, Tori-chan! No, 
who was proud of what she did, because that boy was a piece of shit who deserved to have a bent nose for the rest of his goddamn life. As she stood the, up on the stage whilst he made, whilst the male tribute was picked, and one stared out at the crowd with, ple with a pleased expression, the capital representative for the district cleared his throat before reading off the name of M1's fellow tribute, G. Buck. <laughs> Hey, there was no cry as of August for... <laughs> August? <laughs> August. <laughs> it's only a cry in February. Everyone knows this. <laughs> oh my god. I can't why, can't why as soon as he strides up onto the stage with a mask, cocky smile, and a well-fit brown cloak, she instantly remembered him. In their small district, he was known as the Scout Warden. The Scouts group of orphan troublemakers who stole, volatilized, <laughs> and created general terror and anger where they went. The district hated them, but they were still the, their people, so they didn't allow the peacekeepers to mess with them. Whenever the boy stood beside her, she came to realize that he towered over her, and at this angle she could see under his mask the cocky smile turned into a bittersweet half-grin. They were soon forced to face each other and shake hands. His grip was gentle, but she was surprised to how rough his hand felt. She quickly reminded her herself that if she had spent her entire life running and fighting, her hands would have felt the same. The capital man asked the crowd to offer a round of applause. Usually, none was ever good. Given? Good given. But it was a requirement to ask. There was a sound of shuffling, and M1 finally noticed a group of people her parents had always told her to avert her eyes from. In the middle of a crowd was a group of dirtied-up kids and teens, and they were saluting, an act of respect that the scouts were known for. Soon the entire crowd began to copy them, from the bakers, who seemed to always make fresh bread taste stale, to the born rich people, who were quarters away from having enough money to move the capital. They were all involved in this act. It was a dangerous move, one that could be considered an act of rebellion, but no one seemed to care. M1 spotted her fellow drumline members shedding a few tears as they saluted <laughs> and smiled. Though she was not a scout, she knew what the, that salute meant to them. Fight well, run fast, and raise hell. The sudden flash of the studio lights blinded Archer f Oh, Jesus, me? <laughs> 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 blinding, aren't they, all <laughs> Sudden flash of the studio it like blinded sense. Archer for a few seconds. But he kept his professional smile and raised his eyebrow. Gimma. There was a small <laughs> countdown, five in his earpiece. The camera was pushed closer to him, and the teleprompter was turned on. When the voice in the earpiece whispered go, he was ready. Hello, and welcome to the first broadcast of the... Already, there was technical issues with the teleprompter. <laughs> And the title of this year's games was a long string of numbers replaced it. Knowing his confusion over this was making too much of an awkward gap of silence, he quickly relied on his own, le on his own ability. Annual feature games. Ah, yes, it ain't. This year we have a good bunch of participants competing. As an apology for our great capital's representatives mispronouncing their names, we allowed them to change their names for the entirety of the game. <laughs> now, let's list them off. Archer looked down at the papers on the desk in front of him, in a mild panic. Most of them were blank, and just for show, but one of them had the names of the tributes printed on them so that he could practice saying them before the broadcast. Trying to make his quick shuffling seem as professional as possible, he sorted through the pages before he found the right one. Lord of Unicorn Unicorns and Sanjay, from District 1. M1 Silencer, and the Rockin' Puppy, from District 2. Featherstar and Bin Juice Sunday from District 3. Red Wolfs and Mato Mat Matacha Mat Matoka. Matoka. Matoka from <laughs> District 4. Castaway Elf and Sunny Sun Somi from District 5. Aaron and Fenrir oh, okay. from District 6. Jojo's and Lapras from District 7. Mika and ZC Numbers well... Wow. <laughs> Such a great effort. Those numbers. Oh, it's gone. Oh. Oh, Archer. <laughs> so close to the <laughs> end, too. <laughs> so close. Damn it. So My close. My name was too much to handle. 
They're broken. So who wants oh. to finish reading it? Okay. Uh, where were we? Just. Yeah. Just so the numbers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. CC numbers from District Eight. Yep. Just as he was about to read off the rest of the tribute's names, the lights of the studio cut off. Someone yelled about a power failure, and the room dissolved into chaos. Archer sat back in his chair and sighed. With a defeated voice, he whispered to himself, "Happy feature games." Little did he know that his whisper carried out to the speakers of all those previously watching the broadcast. It was played like a broken record, torn apart with a lower pitch. It would haunt the dreams of its listeners for weeks to come. There was one person who took joy in hearing it. Sat behind a large desk, a uh, huge desk, a nice one. T3 stared at the blank screen that just moments ago had the broadcast. A smile came across his face as he listened to the words played over and over again. Dun, dun, dun.